Okay, welcome to the Bookmap Platform Details webinar. This is Bruce at Bookmap. Risk disclaimer, trading, equities, futures, and cryptocurrencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Uh, if you're new here, for more information, go to bookmap.com. And uh, there is a 14-day free trial uh, of Bookmap. You get the entire platform. Uh, it comes with education. Uh, you get the educational course. It's four parts. Uh, and then uh, that the uh, supportive material that backs up this educational course is the live advanced order flow um, webinars. And those are immediately following this webinar at 11 a.m. Eastern time, New York time. Um, so uh, go through the course. Understand, um, uh, you know, what you're looking at in Bookmap, how to use it, um, some of the setups. Uh, and, and strategies, uh, and then some advanced setups and strategies, and then watch the um, in the live markets uh, how to apply that, uh, uh, what you learned from that educational course. Okay, uh, more information support at bookmap.com. You can reach out. Uh, let's go to the website here and we'll just scroll down. So there is um, uh, intro video here, uh, information just about bookmap in general. A bit further down, there's book map for equities. It's not just for futures, uh, and uh, it's also for cryptocurrencies now. Okay, well, coming soon. Uh, and um, uh, connectivity. Okay, so this is important. Uh, we are a data. We're, <laughs> we are a software platform. We are not a data provider. Okay, so you will need data in order to get book map to work uh, through your broker, or maybe uh, you have a paid data feed. Okay. So we're a platform just like NinjaTrader, TTX Trader Pro, and uh, Interactive Brokers Traders Workstation that you see here. Okay. Now these three platforms here, uh, they they are platforms. However, we connect via the API of these platforms, so we can connect to them. However, we are a platform just like they are. So uh, you will connect Bookmap directly to your data feed through CQG, Rhythmic, Gain. IQ feed, Transact, or Dev Experts, which is the NASDAQ total view, which gives you the uh, all the U.S. equities, all right? Uh, now, if you need uh, a data provider or a trial, uh, you can click here. If we just scroll down a little bit more into this uh, trial area here, okay? Uh, you can click here and uh, uh, give uh, a 14-day trial of um, specific uh, data feed. And, um, and and try Bookmap uh, with it. So 14-day free data, uh, along with 14 days free trial of Bookmap Basic or Advanced. So there's two versions, Basic and Advanced. They're 49 per month or 99 per month, billed quarterly. Uh, and the difference between the two are the add-on features. Okay, so the ability to trade right from the Bookmap chart, uh, and then these proprietary add-ons that we put together that are specifically designed for understanding the order flow. So, for example, um, we have a volume and book and balance indicators. We have a correlation tracker. Uh, and then we also look at not only the specifics in the order flow, but specific players. So a large lot tracker, you can identify larger players holding a lot of liquidity at specific price levels. Iceberg detector is also larger players use hidden orders because they don't want to show uh, their liquidity that they uh, are providing. Uh, in the book. So they, they want to hide that and they'll use an iceberg order. Um, and uh, I can go over those if you have questions, just let me know. Uh, quants, you can reach out to us here. You'll have your specific needs. We work with several quants to connect uh, proprietary data and indicators, etc. Right? You can also follow us here on Twitter uh, at bookmap underscore pro and get the most up-to-date information on what's going on out there. Uh, and then the uh, YouTube page, okay, all sorts of videos are here, great resource. Uh, if you scroll down from the home page, uh, there's some intro videos here, that's a good place to start. Uh, and then maybe with some of the features and components videos to understand what you're looking at in Bookmap. Uh, and then video snippets, uh, these order flow video snippets. Now, these aren't so much about the platform, they're about the order flow phenomena that Bookmap visualizes very clearly and gives you an advantage uh, with that visual, visualization. So these are concise, uh, short videos that go through this um, uh, market phenomena and um, 
uh, how bookmaps uncovering it, and then how you can uh, you can uh, understand this phenomena and take advantage of it uh, with uh, the visualization here in bookmap. Now this is uh, really kind of where the rubber meets the road, uh, and this is where we go through in the advanced order flow webinars in detail. Okay, and um, uh, so you know we'll go through some of it today, uh, not much, just the basics. But the advanced order flow, we really dig into the um, uh, the specifics here uh, in the order book. So let's take a look at Bookmap and what's going on here. All right, so looking at the Nasdaq here. And let's zoom out. Okay, and actually, let me take off. This is a new, what I'm looking at here, this is the new um, uh, book map that uh, is version 7. Okay, and uh, it has a colored heat map. Uh, now, you're not able to get this quite yet. Uh, I'm demoing it now, and so ask questions, please. But um, uh, we will uh, we'll be releasing this very shortly, uh, probably in another week or so. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Uh, it is beta, uh, so uh, be aware of that. Uh, but um, uh, anyway, uh, what are we looking at in Bookmap? All right, this looks like something uh, unfamiliar uh, in terms of a charting platform. Okay, it's actually really simple. Uh, straightforward data. It's it's not a derivative of time, price, or volume. And in fact, in that sense, uh, it is um, uh, conceptually a lot uh, easier or or simpler, I should say. Um, and um, uh, we're just giving you really a very objective view of the marketplace and what's going on there. There's only three elements in this chart. Okay, historical best bid and offer, the volume that traded on the historical best bid and offer in these dots. And then this heat map that you see here, that's outside of the, the, the um, uh, traded range. Okay, this is the, these are where they're offering and this is where they're bidding. So in general, we're basically taking the, the information from the depth of market, the, the dome, and we are recording it and plotting it onto the chart. So you're able to see it. Uh, and you're able, what, what that allows you to do here is to uh, utilize your dome not only for the current market and for like a tick or two um, or, you know, some scalping, but now you can use it on higher time frames. And this is a very distinct advantage, okay? So uh, we can see why, why did price stop up here? Okay, well, look at them on the, on the offer. There's very high liquidity up here. In the market, the buyers were weak. Okay. So we, we're gonna we'll look at into this uh, little area here, but but uh, really the story of what's of what's going on here uh, is uh, these guys being very aggressive. Okay, we can see that, and we can look at this historically and put it all into context. A lot of uh, people here on the offer at the open right after at 9:30, they didn't even come up and test it. Okay, we drop down below, we continue to drop drop down into areas of high liquidity here. Okay, looks like they're starting to absorb. Uh, uh, we 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 pop back up and but they're they're still here um, on the offer at lower areas with high liquidity on several price levels. Okay, and we sell off uh, and um, we do have an, a, re, a reversal pattern here. This is actually something that we see all the time. Uh, we cover in the advanced order flow webinars, but this reversal pattern here: shoulder, head, shoulder. Okay, and uh, and we break above and we come up and we actually break the swing high here by a little bit. Okay, but it's just not sustainable, all right? And we've uh, we've sold back off, but we're getting a complete view of the auction uh, and the, the um, uh, microstructure and the volume that traded in that microstructure. So let's take a look here by showing the um, the candlesticks, uh, and um, just want to. Um, uh, hide everything else here, okay, for the for the moment. Okay, so we're just looking at a candlestick chart here, five minute candlestick chart. Okay, so um, and why? I mean, you know, why did we come up above this area and we sell off? I mean, we already I we already answered that one. You know, uh, they, they were very aggressive uh, uh, on the sell side, okay, on the offer. 
right? We're going to see though some exhaustion in the in the um, uh, uh, on on the buy side, the uh, the aggressor, the uh, market uh, buy orders, uh, and then sellers started to come in here. All right, but um, we'll get into that in just a minute here. Now, why um, this candlestick chart uh, is very opaque and and lacks a lot of data and information. The first reason is because it's aggregated data, okay, within a bar. So most of us have been consuming this kind of data for years. Uh, and, and continue to consume this kind of data. Why are we looking at a bar? I mean, this this bar is is it's handy to maybe get a bigger picture view of what's going on. Uh, but there's so much lacking here uh, in terms of information that we just don't have access to whatsoever. Okay, first off, uh, we don't know what happened between the, these five minute periods. There's all sorts of little microstructures in here. Okay, uh, and um, we want to understand how price and volume is behaving uh, in that uh, microstructure, as well as the bid and the offer. Uh, and then secondly, um, the, the volume here, like wh where is it traded uh, in, in this uh, five minute period? We wanna understand that, it gives us tremendous insight. Okay, we've been consuming this kind of data here with volume in a subchart for years. Problem here is again, it's aggregated uh, within a five minute period uh, and um, uh, it's, um, not uh, not giving us uh, uh, any sort of um, pertinent information on exactly where the volume traded on this candlestick, how much, uh, and um, uh, what type. Okay, and then also within the microstructure, and these are all key points here, uh, and uh, we're lacking all of it here. Okay, we, we you're just kind of like taking a guess uh, if you're going to short the range at the top here. Okay, we, we really have no clue. All right, so let's turn on the volume. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's turn on the um, uh, best bid and offer. Okay, so there's our microstructure. All right, so just with the historical best bid and offer, we can see this microstructure. Uh, and um, we can gain all sorts of information here. So, for example, let's zoom in here. Okay, this is how the candlestick chart is lying to us, uh, or just it's just not giving us clarity. Uh, we can see the you know uh, the wick here, so you know buy pressure, buy pressure starting to come in. We see a green candle as well, so we know some buyers are starting to get interested here. Um, but um, look at this little structural area down here, okay, uh, in, in this area here, uh, and you can see that we broke above uh, the, some of the swings here, okay. And we broke above that little high right here. Okay. Now it 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 um, it broke it, but it, it it wasn't sustained. Okay. Responsive sellers came back in, sold it right back into the range. But look at the microstructure. Okay. The microstructure is here. Okay. Uh, in in this area here especially. All right. So uh, we broke out of that, and we're going to see here. Uh, a sweep of the book. Um, basically, uh, aggressive buyers come in and lift the offer up out of this area, and we are now trading in a new range. Okay, we get a retest back to that area here. This is where uh, you can uh, look for uh, an entry. Okay, on these on these low volume pullbacks into these areas here after you see a break of the structure. Okay. Uh, candlestick chart, uh, you, all you can see is wicks on both sides here and then a, a wick up above here. So actually selling pressure here. Uh, so it's, this is uh, not giving us uh, uh, much insight whatsoever. Okay? But the understanding the microstructure is giving us insight. Okay? And that's, the, that's that problem with the, uh, the candlesticks and the aggregation. So now let's turn on the volume dots. Okay. And uh, let's uh, bump it up a little bit in terms of size. Okay. And let's zoom in here. Okay. Actually, I'm kind of surprised, to be honest. Um, I, I was uh, anticipating much more uh, aggressive buying here. And there's, there's not a whole lot. I mean, it is, it, there's certainly more. There's no question about that. 
okay? Um, usually uh, when we break areas like this and it's sustained, it's because they're, the auction here uh, with the, um, or the transactions in that auction um, are pretty solid. Uh, you know, there's a, a lot of buying here. Uh, it moves us up out of that range, uh, and um, uh, that's usually the case. Here, here it's a little different. Um, you know, I mean, maybe a little bit of a stop hunt, a stop run, but uh, we do get a nice cluster of volume up at the high here, okay? That's a distinction, okay, between the rest of this price activity here. Okay, we don't see that before, right? And in fact, usually the clusters uh, of volume in the downtrend, uh, they're always taking uh, place uh, at lower lows, uh, and you'll see that here. Here it is again. Here it is again. Okay, uh, look at the uh, the, lo the uh, lower highs. This is where it starts to exhaust out in these areas. We see very little volume. This is all pertinent information that we just don't get uh, in a bar. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, we see a distinction here, um, and um, uh, here's our pullback uh, into these areas here. Okay, this is nice little cluster of volume here, and then this is this is where we broke out from. This is exactly where we come back and test. Okay, uh, it comes back to test these buyers, uh, and um, uh, well, we find that uh, there's some selling in, in these little areas here. Actually, it's uh, it's it's kind of a it was kind of a, a toss up here. Could have could have um, could have gone both ways, but uh, uh, what we uh, want to understand though is you know did it accept you know, below uh, where it broke from here, and it didn't, okay? So it's still holding the structure, right? And then we see another break of this structure here, and we see buyers starting to step in again, okay? Look at the significant volume up here, okay? This is where we see the order flow really change over, okay? I thought we'd see it here. Um, it's a little different uh, on, on this uh, on this variation of it. Look at the, the volume here looks pretty good, though. There's uh, quite a bit, right? It would have been nicer to see it come up and test the high here and break it, and then maybe come back down and retest. But here's it here again is our 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 pullback to where we broke from out of this structure. All right now we can just take the candlesticks off now. They're just getting in the way, uh, and um, so here we we broke we broke above the range, came back. Okay, we see some sellers still, but uh, at this point there's just a lot of buying pressure. The buyers step in again, and we're off to new highs. Okay. Right now, we've just looked at only two elements here in Bookmap. Okay, the historical best bid and offer, and the volume that's trading on that historical best bid and offer. Okay, now for example, let me zoom into this area here in this cluster, and I want to show you what this looks like. Those two elements. It's very simple. This is about as simple as the market can get. Okay, historical best bid and offer. Best offer is the red line. Best bid is the green line. Okay, now these dots here are the transactions that took place. These are market buys, these green dots. Okay, this is the aggressor classification of volume because they paid up for it, they crossed the spread, they hit the market buy, and they took liquidity. They didn't provide liquidity, they took it off of the best offer, and a green dot is presented. Okay, red is, the, is, a, is a market sell. Okay, now we can get all of this information here uh, hovering over this with a, um, the uh, tooltip. Uh, it's also in the lower left-hand corner down here, so you don't need to have the tooltip on if you don't want. And you can see you get the date, the time. Let me just use it as well. So you can see that in the lower left-hand corner as well, the, the date, the time, what was on the ask here at this price level, and the volume. So we know this is a one lot, okay? This is a one lot as well, right? This little dot over here, this is 20. Okay, so the size of the dot matters. Uh, it, it's showing us uh, how much, how much in, in reference to the other dots. Okay, uh, and uh, let's zoom into this little area here because I want to show you this. As we zoom in, note really what's occurring here. This is this is where really what happened. Now there's a little bit of latency here in the market. The um, quotes data did not keep up with the trade data. Okay, so a little bit of latency, but we're at the microsecond level down here. Right, and we're understanding here at this microsecond level, and these are millions of seconds, um, exactly what occurred here. Okay, look at a little tranche of uh, three, 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 and then uh, and then two. Okay, and we know exactly what occurred here. Each little um, market um, event uh, is recorded. 
uh, and then plot it onto the chart. Okay, now we don't trade at these levels, right? Um, but if you're, um, you know, trading algorithmically, uh, then this is going to be really helpful as well because you will want to understand how your algo is performing in this environment. Uh, and uh, it's an excellent debriefing tool here. Um, however, um, and that's for a lot of the quants as well, but it's it's not just for the quants. Note how as I zoom back out, okay, we've uh, just visually or graphically um, aggregated all that data into one big dot. Okay, and we know it's for a volume of uh, of 20 as we we hovered over this and uh, and we saw it. Okay. All right. So the um, uh, that's that's what uh, we're recording here. Okay. Uh, down to the 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 detail. Uh, and um, now as I continue to zoom out, though, we'll we'll continue to compress that time uh, timeline down here, and we're going to show. Um, uh, kind of a uh, visual aggregation of what occurred. And at, at some points, you'll see that there's these little pie displays of the volume. Uh, and that pie display, okay, uh, what, it, what it's really showing you here is that um, uh, there were, uh, there's so many transactions that took place uh, that we can't, you know, we have to show it with a, uh, a pie display to give you the um, uh, delta or understanding of the buy versus sell. Uh, volume. Okay, so this was for 45. Uh, the aggressor here, this big dot, uh, most of it was selling, but there is some buying in here as well. Okay, those are two elements in the chart that we're showing. Okay, now that third element is the heat map, uh, and um, the heat map, uh, as like I noted uh, earlier, is what that's showing you is the um, uh, the liquidity historical view. Okay, so let's go through the current market, and then I'll show you the historical view. Okay, so most of us uh, are familiar with a dome uh, and um, showing the depth of market. So if I zoom in here in book map, uh, this is the depth of market in the dome here. Okay, here's our price ladder, and this is COB column, current order book. Uh, this is the liquidity in the market. This is your dome. Okay, you can see the amount of contracts lined up at these specific price levels on the offer and then on the bid. Uh, here's the current market right here as well. Okay, this is the best bid and offer right now. And then these numbers are the, it's the last traded volume. Okay, so this is the current market and the dome is great for the current market. Okay, we can see where they're lining up to trade. Uh, and uh, and this is an excellent, um, uh, excellent tool. The problem with the dome though is when these numbers change, and you can see that they're changing all the time, okay, you're going to have to memorize what, what occurred at some of those areas. Okay, you, you'll, um, uh, once the, the data um, is refreshed and changes, uh, we don't have a record of what, what happened there. And uh, that's the problem with the dome here. So it's very tedious to memorize all of these areas, and there's a lot of questions to ask. How are they behaving in here? Um, uh, how are they, uh, what about areas around it, above it or below it? How are they behaving? Uh, and uh, we can start to identify specific players. Uh, and we can also identify algo behavior. Uh, all sorts of things that you're just, you're never going to see here in the dome. Uh, and, um, uh, but we, we do that in the heat map, okay, by, um, I think it just, yeah, they changed this in the new version. All right, there we go. I think that's it. Okay. Um, we we um, So let's take a look here. Uh, this is the current market, best bid and offer. And then you can see this colored heat map. Okay. So when it's, uh, this is the colored heat map up here as well. Dark gray is low liquidity. Blue is uh, more White is a little bit more, yellow more yet, and then uh, orange is the highest area of liquidity in this colored heat map. Okay, so we can see that up here uh, at 66.80, there's high liquidity. Okay, and uh, note how the the heat map changes here to reflect the changes uh, in the liquidity at these levels. Okay, so um, uh, you, you'll see the numbers change and the heat map will change. Now. This is the current market, and you see that the, the heat map's always changing, okay? 
where this really gets um, insightful is that all of this data is recorded and then plotted onto the chart. So this area right here at 60, 6680, we can see them coming into the market, uh, adding liquidity, and then pulling, and then adding back in. Okay. So we know that uh, uh, these guys here, and then and then price comes up and um, uh, just just now uh, and traded up through this area, and they pulled liquidity. They didn't want to be sellers here. They wanted to be sellers at higher areas. We can see them pulling and adding higher. Okay. That's the kind of behavior in this auction right now on the offer. So do they really want to sell at these areas? The answer is no, they don't. They want to sell up at higher areas. Look at the buyers being aggressive here underneath. Okay. They want to buy up at higher areas. Okay, We can even start to identify individual players. Look how at this area here, this uh, this isn't a, um, it looks like an algo that uh, uh, it has its distance away from the market, but then it pulls and adds a couple ticks higher, pulls, adds higher, pulls, adds higher, etc. Okay. Now, why do I think that this is high probability it's the same player? Because as soon as he pulls, He's adding it higher, right? Okay. Um, well, anyway, uh, that's the heat map. And now that's just kind of current and recent historical uh, view. Let's zoom out here and look how we can get a, a much bigger picture view, okay? That was uh, in this little area right here, or was that in, I think, just current market here? Right. Uh, that, and look at how myopic of view that really is. OK. And it, it's giving us insight. OK. We know that, that you know, they, they're pulling and adding higher and the guys on the bid are getting aggressive and adding higher, too. OK. So they want to be buyers up at higher levels. OK. And so we've come back up and test the swing here. OK. And we still can look here. Uh, where are the majority of the uh, uh, players? And they're up here in these areas here. They're starting to layer in up here. All right, so now we can um, have that smaller view and understand, um, you know, some of these moves, but we can also understand bigger picture moves, okay? Like I was mentioning earlier, this is what's going on here. There's a lot of sellers up here. Okay? We didn't even come up and test them, okay? A lot of sellers here and also up here, okay? And, uh, and the trend was down, right? So we can start to understand um, uh, these areas, on a much higher time frame, um, and and utilize that dome on that much higher time frame. Anyway, uh, that's book map. Um, went over some very basic stuff in the order flow. Usually we go through a little bit more, uh, but um, uh, anyway, uh, can always uh, ask questions, guys. I'm happy to go through things. Uh, I got to jump uh, to the next webinar, so. Um, uh, if you're uh, in trial or current customer, I'll see you over there. Uh, if not, we'll catch up tomorrow. Thanks.